Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today I would like to talk to you about the Lenovo X3650 Model 3 because I have received comments um, more than usual amount of comments of people that are buying this server and well I think it's an awesome server but I really want to help some of these people to get the maximum out of their server and one of the things that I have noticed is that the IMM in that server is not very widely used the IMM stands for the integrated management module and it's a computer in the server and that computer in the server can help you manage the server it's like an extra layer of management that you have in your server even if the server is off you can access the IMM and turn the server on and that is often very helpful this is not a new feature up here you can actually just see the model 1 of uh, the X3650 and that also had an management adapter but back then it was called an RSA remote something I forget embarrassing remote it's gone I think we should try and have a look at what does the IMM look like on the server and how do you configure it and how do you access it so we're gonna go to this um, computer which has black screen in the meanwhile this one is running ESXi we're gonna boot the server and go into the BIOS so when the server is booting we can go into the BIOS by pressing F1 when this splash screen is on it will later come up and actually have the F1 and uh, F12 and I think there's an F8 as well uh, in a second or two this will turn black and then it will come back and then these uh, if numbers will pop up down here there it turns black it's doing something else for a little bit it would be nice if I could zoom out on this little camera down here yeah um, there it comes back and then it came down there but it had already registered that I had pressed F1 this is an important feature um, not as much on this server but like there is some of the bigger servers that takes like 10 minutes to boot and those F1 and F12 and F8 they're not there very long but the splash screen is so as soon as you see the splash screen you can press uh, which button you want to use normally you know what you want to do like go into the BIOS which is just F1 here and um, you don't have to worry about missing it you can just press it when the splash screen is there let's go see the IMM so in the BIOS here we have these options and what we are looking for is under system settings so if we go into system settings there is the integrated management module and I think I believe that I said that right over here it's called the IMM but we go in there and here we have different options we have post watchdog timer I have no idea never used that for anything uh, and it has a value so okay reboot system on NMI okay so if it gets an NMI it's gonna reboot it if it if it encounters an error an NMI error well the integrated management module will actually boot the server you can of course disable that um, but that means that the server is gonna be down command on the USB interface preference I've never been in there this option will disable enable the Ethernet over USB interface on IMM please allow a few minutes for this to take effect I have never used that either so if you use this for anything uh, do tell me what it does so but here we have the network settings and that one is actually important so let's go in there in here we can set up the IMM I have never used the IMM on it I got this server from Jesper in Copenhagen they had been taken out of a data center that's not IP numbers that I have configured the network interface uh, right now it's set as dedicated let's see what we have of 
options there. We can share the interface or we can dedicate it. So if we share it, I would expect that sharing the interface means that it's not only the IMM, which it is right now. It's a dedicated port on the back of the server, which um, is only for the IMM. And when we share it, I would expect that a network card would show up in the operating system. I'm not sure about that, but there is an option. I always run this dedicated, and I do recommend that if you're in a professional environment, that's probably the way to do that, both for uh, security and for safety. Then we have the option of putting in a host name. Uh, let's just do that. Let's call this, I'm going to call this my playhouse. Then we have, oh, we have static. That's the, um, the network configuration of the IMM. The IMM is kind of a web interface. It, uh, you access it or you can access it through a web interface. There is also command line options that you can go and turn on and off the server through uh, Tilnet. We have the option of um, putting in a static IP, of course. It's, we can enable DSTP. We can enable DSTP with failover, which means that it will try DSTP and then it will go for a static IP uh, if that doesn't work. So we're gonna enable DHTP. That disables these options here. IP version 6, I'm not using that yet, so um, not gonna be using that. Then we have some VLAN support, so I would be able to tell it to use a VLAN. And I might be um, going into that very, very, very soon, so. Um, I'll keep that in mind. My plan is to move all the management adapters over to their own VLAN, but that's gonna be a different video, so I'm gonna be waiting a little bit on that one. Normally, you would just have your, well, in a business environment, you might want to have your management adapters on their own VLAN uh, so that you can block off traffic to them. Not everybody has to be able to mess with the management adapters so right now we're gonna keep that on disabled let's see next options is um oh if we enable that we can of course set an vlan id uh, right now that is it jumps uh, over that but now we can save our network settings here there and it tells us that we have to press uh, yes big y to do that here it uh, continues it's gonna want to boot the IMM for this to um, take effect so we're gonna go out there are two options beneath the network configuration one of them is reset IMM to default that's um, you know when if you set something wrong if you put a password also an important thing actually if you have created a password on your IMM you can reset it here. We should actually do that because I have no idea what the password could be for this. So let's um, let's reset it to default. Right now the IMM is booting from the other chains that I did, so it do not allow me to default it. Um, I messed up. I did this in the wrong order. If you get a new server, a used server, I would recommend starting by resetting the IMM to default. You're not gonna mess up anything. You're just gonna be resetting it to factory default. Everything installed in the IMM would still be there, but passwords and stuff like that would go away. Actually, while it's booting, we might as well see the IMM. It's um, on the server right here. Uh, this is the back of that Lenovo X3650 model 3 it has an IMM adapter that is right there we could just unpop that and it's uh, down here it says system management system MGMT and we can just pop that in again this port is on all the Lenovo X3650s it's always available but 
there are some features inside of the servers that you have to enable with a with a hardware key and we're gonna have a look at that then there is the normal network ports here one and two and there is the uh, possibility of expanding that with a three and four here so down here i have another m3 so we're gonna pop that open and just see that hardware key the server comes automatically with the IMM installed, but it doesn't have all the features. But to enable all the features, like the remote console, you need a hardware key like this. This is a tiny little thing, and they're really cheap on eBay and Amazon right now. It's like $10, $15 for a thing key like that, and it opens up all the features. If you're getting a server like this, get yourself one of these. They are not expensive and they make the server a whole lot cooler. It, um, it just sits in a little slot here and pops into a connector on the system board. No. So, let's see if this is done. And we can reset it now. I reset it to default. After that, I need to reset the... That, that is gonna boot it. It, it is a tiny computer on the server so it also needs to boot i'm expecting it's done now been away for a little bit network configuration this is how it looks default it's dedicated and we will have to change our name again here there dhtp with failover we're gonna just pick dhtp and it has found my dhtp so that is all good. Uh, it has uh, taken number 28. We're gonna remember that. IP version 6 is enabled. And I wanna disable that. Totally up to you what you do with that. And the VLANs, we're gonna keep this enter. It tells us here that the network settings has been saved. To uh, have them really take effect, we have to reset the IMM. So we'll go do that. Press yes to reset the IMM now. So it's gonna do that there. It's gonna take a little bit, but let's go to the computer and see what we can see this way. So in here with my computer, we're gonna punch in the IP number for the IMM adapter in a Google Chrome browser. So I have it here. It even tells me what host this is. That's fantastic. So if we pop that up, it comes with IBM integrated management module and it has a password uh, Luckily, we know the default password for this and um, Default username the default username is user ID User ID and all capital letters the password is password all capital letters but with a zero instead of the O so P A S S W zero R D and capital letters, big letters, login. Then we get a screen here that uh, tells us that we can pick a timeout. If we look at the options, we can pick one minute up to 20 minutes and also the no timeout. If this is your own local server, you can just pick the no timeout. If this is a, if you're doing important work on this server and this server is multiple miles away and if you fuck this up you have to drive to this server I will always recommend using a timeout because um, it will kick the user that you have logged in with out of the IMM after 20 minutes and it has been seen I have seen that if this locks up well you have to go and physically reset the IMM and that's not as fun as just being kicked off after 20 minutes so 20 minutes is a good one uh, if you're doing this professionally if it's just your home toy server do whatever continue and here is all the information that we get on the IMM it tells us a lot about the server the voltage on the battery the, the 5 volt voltage the 12 volt voltage the CMOS voltage 3.3 volts the temperature in the server room the server is currently on uh, right now it's uh, server state it's uh, system system on 
starting Uefi. It's kind of in the BIOS, so that's it. Then there is uh, other information here. There's logs. Apparently the log has been cleared here when I reset to default, so there's not much in that log. There is vital product data. There's the serial number. There's the firmware labels. Oh, that was uh, firmware is down here. IMM is from 2013. Actually looks a bit old. I thought that I updated all of this. But down here is some of the important stuff. You can power on and off the server from in here. Right now the server is on. We can power on the server immediately, which would be stupid when it is on. We can power the server on at a specific time. So we can set the time here that we want this server to, well, 1970. That would be a great time to turn this server on. That would have been worth multiple millions of billions of dollars back then. Um, so that's probably not a good option. But we can also shut it down. We can shut it down immediately. We can shut down the OS. Then the, the IMM will tell the operating system, hey dude, we are shutting down here. Do you have anything that you want to get rid of before we do that? Um, and then the operating system has a it has a chance to, to close down whatever it's doing before um, the IMM will kick it. Then we can, we can shut down and reset the server, which means that it's not going to turn off. It's just going to turn off and then turn on again. And we can reset it immediately and we can schedule. This is actually a cool one. You can power cycle the server or more or less you can also set when you want to use the server here. Every Monday morning we can turn on the server at some specific time and we can shut it off again every Friday at some specific time. That way the server is not on during the weekend. But we could have it power up like two hours before anyone turns up at work. Uh, I wouldn't generally recommend this. Uh, by far the most hardware errors comes when you turn on and off your equipment. If it's just always running, it's just always working. Then we can schedule a restart. This is good for, let's say that we have some kind of software that just runs full in here. We can actually have the server turn off and on, and then it will reload that software on there. So then the next remote control comes out here, and that's where you need the hardware key. If you don't have the hardware key, this feature will not be available for you. If we want to run this, we have to make sure that we have Yaver installed, of course. We um, can also do this in, in Internet Explorer, and it actually usually works better in Internet Explorer, sadly. And you kind of need to do some ninja hacks here. So let's shut this off. Let's log out there and log into Internet Explorer, same password. We can use the Java client. Uh, there is also an ActiveX available sometimes. I'm not sure when that is available. I don't use that often, but sometimes it's more stable than the Java version. So. Down here we can pick if if I'm the only one doing a remote control to this server, well, use the single mode. If like we are a couple of guys that needs to go onto this server, uh, one of us might be near the server, another one might be 50 kilometers away. We can go in using multi-mode remote console, so um, the other guy could see what I'm doing and I can see what he is doing. So. Uh, more users access to the console so let's try this then it pops up down here and tells us that uh, internet explorer has blocked the pop-up thank you very much we're gonna do always allow but that means that we have to go in there again because it kicks us out now we can press that again and now it will do the pop-up but it's probably not gonna work. Uh, we can open that. It came down here, can we see it? Yeah, it's, it's in view. Didn't really work. 
Let's try again. Let's just save it then. It's a Java file that is being downloaded. So let's save that. And then open it. Will that work? So the file is downloaded here to my download. So if we right click and launch on that, it actually pops up. I don't know why I didn't do that, but it tells us that uh, application is blocked by Java security and it just disappears. There is a workaround of that about that. So we go down here and go into the control panel. See you in control panel there. In the control panel, there is a Java thing there. So we double click the Java thing. Under the Java thing, there is a security one. And we have a list of exceptions down here. So we're gonna edit our list of exceptions. Go down to the bottom and we're gonna add one here. And we're gonna type in HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash and the IP number of our IMM. There, number 28, I'm gonna add that. Okay, edit list, go down to the bottom. Number 28 is there, we're gonna add one with just HTTP. That was not 28. There. Okay. So let's see if that did the trick. Yeah, this is way better. It's still complaining like hell, but it's better. I accept the risk. Run. And login failed. So, ah. We are gonna. It's probably unhappy here, so I'm gonna log out of this one. Close all tabs, we're gonna go in again. And this is the same crap every time. Uh, that's why we don't like Yeva. We downloaded a new one. Let's try and launch that one. Uh, accept, run, connecting, and then we got it. So apparently the Chrome browser was um, in our way. So this is the screen of the of the server out there. That took a while to get in there, and um, I've done this a lot of times. Sometimes this will just work the first time. Other times you can mess with this for hours. But we are on the on the server out there. We are actually in the bias here, so we can go check out. The, we can check what we have in the server. System information, system summary. Let's see. We have two CPUs. They are both 2.4 gigahertz CPUs. We have some RAM. We have uh, 98 gigs of RAM. Very nice. So it's very usable here. That I can actually use the IMM to install the operating system on the server. And um, not only that, I don't even have to, to go to the server to put the operating system on it. I can, uh, the IMM provides tools for that. So up here on the tools, we can launch the virtual media. So if we do that, it will um, pop up here, this little screen there. And in here we can tell it to mount an ISO file and add an image. So we'll add an image. And I saw that I had some in the download directory. And so I'm not going to do that. But if I wanted to, I have a server 2016 image laying right there that I could I can put on there. We can open that and that is uh, is now mounted to the server. So. If we reboot the server now and choose to boot from the CD-ROM drive, it will start the installation of 2016. And I can just unmount this again when I'm done. And yes, we're gonna unmount that, exit. 
And so that's why the IMM is so neat. There are a lot more features here, but I think this video is already too long. So to all of you that has just purchased this Lenovo X3650 Model 3, you made a really good deal. That server is really, really, really good. It's in my favorite series of server, which is the X3650, and it's a really good model. You can feature this server out really well, and if you're interested in what this server can do, I can really recommend Lenovo Press. They have done a lot of work uh, describing what this server can do, and it's just one long page. And in the top here, you can kind of uh, just press, is this just white to you? I'm not sure about that. You can go in and check the memory options, you can go in and check network options. All the good stuff is there. And also, even on an iPad, you can go in and turn on and off your server if that's what you want. So, it's a really good server. It will do the Intel Xeon 5600 series all the way up to 3.6 gigahertz. And it has a memory capacity of 288 gigabytes of RAM. It should really cover most workloads. As you can probably hear, I highly recommend this server and they're fairly cheap. I'll see if I can um, get some prices if anyone is interested. Uh, these are not widely available all over the world. I know here in Denmark they're widely available. In, for example, the US, you have usually gone more for HP or Dell servers, um, but they can be found. I have bought a lot of these X3650s from new. I have never had one fail except exchangeable parts. Disk drives, RAM, and I think maybe a power supply. I have never changed the system board on one of these servers. You might see something different. We usually have these servers in very clean data centers. So after five years of use and they come out of production, they look brand new inside. That's not always the case. So if you get a server that has been in a working environment, <clears throat> it might look like shit and you could have a different experience with one of those. So thank you very much for watching my videos. I highly recommend this server. Do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day. Bye bye.